If you don't mind, let's just take a few minutes and talk about the graph of an equation. Now, historically, this goes back to Rene Descartes, who lived between 1596 and 1650. Basically, the idea of re representing points on a plane. So the most basic one usually that we talk about is like 3x plus y equals 7. And you see geogebra.org graphs it for us. Now, if you look at the intercepts, if you let y be 0, you'll get 3x equals 7 or x equals 7 thirds, which is right here a little more than 2. If you let x be 0, you get y equals 7, and you can see the y-intercept is right there. This is a linear equation, so you get the graph of a line. So what you're looking at here is this line is the graphical representation of the equation and or of this function, and the equation is considered the analytic representation of the function. Now, if you subtract x from both sides, you'll get y equals 7 minus 3x. So we'll let f of x equals 7 minus 3x. f of x often replaces y. It's a functional notation. Notice it goes through a little more than 2, and it goes through 7 up here. Notice now we have the table of values, which is a numerical representation of the, of the function. This table can be expanded to go on forever, any value of x. And as you can see, if um, I zoom in, this graph goes on forever. So all you're doing is looking at a small portion of the graph. Now, when it's written in this form, the number in front of the x is the slope, negative 3. You can see if you go down 3 and over 1, the slope is negative 3. See, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. This number here, separate from the one with the x, is the y-intercept. You see that goes through 7. Now, any of these points are solutions to this equation. For example, 1, 4, if you put 1 in for x and 4 in for y, you'll get 4 plus 3, which is 7. So 1, 4 is a solution to that. Uh, you can come up with all kinds of solutions. Like, for example, if you want to see what, this, what um, value goes with x equals 3, just put 3 in here and you'll see it's negative 2. Um, if you go over 3, you see negative 2 is there. Um, if you want to put in 5 here, notice this point moves down, and you're at 5, negative 8. If you go to this, and you put 5 in, 15, and negative 8 for y, 15 minus 8 is 7. Okay, so you can sketch a graph by putting the values of x, plotting the points, and just drawing the line that goes through them. Now, you might have a quadratic. This is a linear equation that you have currently, but a quadratic could be something like um, x. I'm not sure how to get the exponent on this, um, oh, here, x squared, I'll use the arrow over to move it, and let's put minus 2, okay, and I'll just move this back to 2, all right, and you see it makes this U shape, which is called a parabola, um, in here, we could write it as y equals x squared.
squared arrow over minus two. And you'll see it'll draw the picture there. By the way, if you let x be zero, you'll see y equals negative two. That's the intercept here, often useful in drawing graphs. And if you let y be zero, add two and then take plus or minus the square root of two, and that's where the two x-intercepts will be at. But a basic way of sketching a graph is by plotting points. Simply fill in the x values and make a table. And remember, these graphs go on forever. If I use my mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. So we saw a linear equation. We saw a parabola. Now let's, let's do one more. Um, let's try uh, let me see we use the a to the b key here to put something up in the exponent and we'll use it to the third power then uh, minus x squared then minus 25. Now, x cubed minus x squared minus 25, the graph on the screen makes it look like a straight line. Now, this is a cubic when it's to the third power. But this is a note also about using graphs. If you zoom in, uh, let's see. Can we see, ah, there. If you bring it up, and you zoom in here. Now the graph, instead of looking like a straight line, looks quite different. You see that a cubic does this kind of wave here. Now, if you put zero in for x, you get the y-intercept, which is at negative 25. So this last one, the cubic, is a lesson about using these graphing utilities. If you go up here and you go to zero, it looks like a straight line. You're going to have to, if you use a graphing calculator, you're going to have to find the right window for these functions. I hope that helps you. That is an introduction to the graph of an equation. We saw a linear, we saw a quadratic, and we saw a cubic. Thank you.